Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome. My name is Ken Gavin. I am the director of communications for the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. Thank you for being here to join us for the announcement about this year's Catholic Charities Appeal. And in addition to those of us who are present here, members of the press corps, our friends and beneficiaries, I'd also like to welcome everyone who is watching us live via streaming video on the Archdiocesan website. This morning you'll hear from Archbishop Shapio, you'll hear from Mr. David Ripsom, who is president of the Catholic Charities Appeal Board. You'll hear from Amy Stoner, who is the director of community-based services for Catholic Social Services and from Ms. Kathleen Gould from St. Catherine Day School, our wonderful host for today. Uh, I'd ask that if anybody has a cell phone with them, if you could please turn that off or set it to silent so there are no interruptions. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mr. David Ripson. David. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. It's uh, great to see you all. Uh, as it was just indicated, I am David Ripson. I'm president of the Catholic Charities Appeal. Uh, board, and uh, it, uh, as you also know, the Catholic Charities Appeal Board is the single largest fundraising organization for the Catholic Diocese, and uh, we provide support to 180 different uh, beneficiaries, two of whom you'll hear from this morning. Um, under the Archbishop's uh, leadership and commitment, uh, the Catholic Charities Appeal has had tremendous success over the last number of years, and the Archbishop will share some of those details with you. But I want to help put some things in context for the Archbishop's uh, comments. All of us here today had, have had the opportunity for a nice breakfast. We've had the opportunity to have a warm uh, home and a comfortable bed. We've had the opportunity to see our family members have a solid education in a traditional school. But the beneficiaries here today provide the difference for tens of thousands of Philadelphians over the, every day in terms of these same things that we take for granted. So it's a tremendous opportunity for us on the Catholic Charities Appeal Board and those who are with the beneficiaries to really support um, these individuals throughout the entire region. And with that, I'm very happy to introduce our Archbishop, who has been the leader behind this whole uh, enterprise. Thank you. Uh, my co-speaker here is Sister Kathleen, who does a wonderful job uh, helping, and uh, she's everywhere I go, so I'm really grateful for her presence. <laughs> it's like she's one of my assistant bishops. So I'd like to begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, you are the Father of us all, and provide for us in every need. You have shown us your love beyond all telling, in sending your Son as our Savior and Redeemer. The saving life of your Son, Jesus, gives hope to all people, in every place and in all circumstances. This gift of hope continues in the work of your church, who follows the example of your son as she serves all your children, especially those in most need. We pray with sincere hearts that the generous efforts of this annual Catholic Charities Appeal may give hope to all and be a brilliant sign of your goodness to us. We also ask the heavenly help of Mary, Our Lady of Charity, to come to the aid of this annual appeal with her prayers. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for your introduction, David. It was a fine summary of what Catholic Charities is all about. Today, we officially launched the Catholic uh, Charities Appeal, 2017 uh, Catholic Charities Appeal of the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. As Dave mentioned, this is the single largest annual fundraising effort within our local church, and its success is crucial absolutely crucial to our ability to serve those who come to us for, for assistance, and that number grows all the time. Last year, we responded to Pope Francis's call to service with an expanded vision of this appeal, and I'm happy to report that the appeal, along with dedicated fund drives for selected beneficiaries, has raised over $10 million. So I don't, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone who has supported the church's mission to the poor. 
No matter how large or how small the gift, each one is necessary. And every, one, every gift is used in the best possible way to serve many, many people. Uh, we feed the hungry. We shelter the homeless. We educate special needs children. And we offer aid to so many others who are vulnerable because they aren't able to help themselves. The theme for this year's Catholic Charities Appeal is giving hope to all. What is hope? You know, hope is confidence in the future. And Christians consider hope one of the three primary virtues, along with faith and charity, because it's an act of confidence in God taking care of us in the future, trusting in his providential care. So I, I, I know that the generosity of the people of the church and others will give a sense of hope to those who especially need it in the, the difficult moments of their life. Once again, there are five key areas of mission for the Catholic Charities Benefit Appeal. Education, social services, evangelization in parishes and the spiritual life of the church, the clergy, especially the elderly clergy, and local missionary activities. Our goal this next year is 1.2, I'm sorry, $12.5 million. I don't know where I got 1.2, that would be disappointing, but it's $12.5 million, and uh, it's our confident hope that we'll be able to meet that, meet that goal. And when we hear the word charity, um, most of us probably think it means to help other people, because that's the, the close association of the word in our vocabulary. But the word really comes from a Latin word, uh, caritas, which means love. And it's, charity is probably love in action is the reason we associate uh, charities with helping other people. But it it's really has a foundation in love, love of God and love for our neighbor. So if you love God and you love your neighbor, and I'm sure you all do, it's very important that you become involved in this Catholic Charities Appeal. Others now are going to come forward to give a little more concrete uh, appearance to the kind of things we're talking about, and I'll be back at the end in order to say thanks once again. So thank you, everybody, for being here, especially grateful to the television cameras and the press who are here. Thank you, Archbishop. Um, one other fact that you might find of, of note, in addition to the fact that we raised over $10 million last year, is that those, uh, t that $10 million number was raised through a total of over 61,000 gifts. So if you think about that number, that is a tremendous outpouring of support for the, uh, the service uh, of the beneficiaries that you're now going to hear from about uh, two individuals or two organizations. Amy Stoner is Director of Community-Based and Homeless Services at Catholic Social Services, which is the largest beneficiary of, uh, of the support from the Catholic Charities Appeal. She has been with uh, Catholic Social Services for over 30 years and, and clearly radiates her, her ministry and her commitment to the organization. Uh, Amy. Good morning. My name is Amy Stoner, and I'm the director of the Community-Based and Homeless Services Division for Catholic Social Services. I am here today with my hope and my inspiration for Mercy Hospice. On behalf of Jim Amato, I would like to uh, thank the Catholic Charities Appeal Board and the Catholic Foundation for their tireless efforts on behalf of us. I'd also like to thank Archbishop Chaput um, for entrusting the charitable works of the church to Catholic Social Services. Thank you. And to those who continue to support our works of mercy through their generous donations and prayers. As you've just heard, this appeal benefits tens of thousands of people in our area on a daily basis. I am here to talk to you today about one aspect of our work and the impact of the appeal on a very human level. To do so, I have to share with you some harsh realities that we encounter on a daily basis, including poverty, hunger, food insecurity, homelessness, 
mental health issues, abuse, neglect, and addiction. But I also plan to leave you here today with a message of hope. A few weeks ago, I attended a homeless Memorial Day event, and I was among hundreds of people who honored and remembered 200 homeless and formerly homeless men and women who died in our city last year alone. Tragically, we honored two of our own who we had served. In addition, there were 900 drug overdose dose deaths in Philadelphia last year. 80% of those deaths resulted from a prescription painkiller or illegal narcotic like heroin. Not long ago, I witnessed a young woman crouched down on the sidewalk injecting herself with heroin. And more recently, a young woman active in her addiction showed up on the doors of Women of Hope in a freezing cold code blue night in search of a warm and safe place to sleep. And who among us has not been touched personally or affected by someone active in addiction or in their recovery? But amidst these realities, there is hope and proof that amazing transformation can occur and that lives are being saved and that recovery is possible. This place of hope and healing is called Mercy Hospice. Mm -hmm. We're right now 34 residents that struggle with addiction and are coping with the wreckage of their past. Know all too well that they are living proof that recovery is possible. Anyone close to addiction knows all too well that addiction affects more than just the addicted person. It shatters lives and destroys families. The impact on young children is significant. Mercy Hospice is not a program. Mercy Hospice is a field hospital. It is where wounds are cleansed and healed. And make no mistake, when you enter Mercy Hospice, God is present there. When a mother active in her addiction, the drug always comes first. And when she is in recovery, recovery comes first. And so we help every mom learn how to integrate her recovery with her roles and responsibilities of taking care of her child and rebuilding and reclaiming her family. Mercy Hospice is the only recovery program in Philadelphia for women and children. We as the charitable arm of the church are called to respond to this opioid epidemic and crisis. I carry with me my Narcan in my overdose rescue kit, but I also carry with me my strong faith. Please continue to support our work, and I ask that you pray for me and the leadership of Catholic Social Services, our dedicated staff, and those that we accompany on their journey towards transformation, healing, and recovery. And most of all, please pray for all those suffering from addiction. Thank you. Well, you can see that in many ways, the easy part of the job is raising the money, uh, even though that itself has its challenges. But the service providers, those who are committed in ministry and mission are the ones who really are where the rubber meets the road. So, Amy, thank you so much. Thank you to your team. Um, God bless you and your mission. Um, and now I'm pleased to uh, introduce uh, Ms. Kathleen Gould, uh, president of, or I'm sorry, principal of uh, St. Catherine's School here. She's been a lifetime educator, 25 years in, in uh, special education needs. She's been principal here uh, 18 months. And uh, again, another powerful woman uh, doing powerful work. Thank you. Good morning, and welcome to St. Catherine Day School. 
I am Kathleen Gould, as just said, and I am the principal here. Over here are some of my wonderful students who are excited to have visitors at our school. So if anybody ever wants a tour and wants to come visit St. Catharines, we're happy to have you anytime, today or any other day. Today I'm going to take a few minutes and discuss the term with, that students with disabilities has sometimes experienced, and it's called chronic success deprivation. The term is exactly what it sounds like, and it occurs when a student does not do well academically and does not receive praise for his or her work. One can see this deprivation in a student that sits in the back of the room and wonders why his or her drawing is not displayed on the wall. Or the student who continually fails at math because they're placed in the wrong learning environment. I am very proud to stand here today and let you know that students in St. Catherine Day School or any other diocesan school of special education have never experienced chronic success deprivation while being educated in our classrooms. Due to the support of Catholic Charities, our schools are able to provide individualized educations to students that focus on personal best, not being the best, but personal best. We work daily on skills that provide our students the opportunity to meet their personal best through spiritual guidance, academics, social, and vocational training. Not only does this help our students reach their personal best, it takes time and dedication, but it also hope, offers hope for their future. Personal bests in our schools of special education include learning how to read Braille at St. Lucie's, learning how to advocate for themselves because they have a hearing deficiency at Archbishop Ryan School for the Deaf, and learning the skills to be employed in the community at Our Lady of Confidence. And then there's the learning how to count change for a $20 bill at St. Catharines. So Tamika is standing here meet with me today because she shyly came up to me when we first met and asked me, could you teach me the skills how to make change and to work in a nursing home? Tamika has, has worked hard with her teachers, very hard, with dedicated teachers, and has greatly increased her abilities to count change. And she also gets to experience working in a nursing home each week with our job coach. So the skills she's learning now will transfer for future employment. Yay, Tamika. <laughs> We're proud. We're proud. All of our schools of special education want to continue to offer our students the opportunity to learn, grow, and meet their personal best. We want to continue to give the Tamikas of Philadelphia the hope of meeting their dreams of working in a job like Tamika gets to do at the nursing home. And we want to continue to give our students the individualized education that they deserve. However, to do these works, we need the support of Catholic Charities, and it's our hope that you will support our students like Tamika by giving to Catholic Charities during this campaign. We, the schools of special education, really, really like our work. We really, really do it well. And we really, really need your support so that our students can meet their personal best. Thank you so much for being here, and God bless. You. You did Well, what do you think of that? Isn't that incredible? You know, if, if the people who support the Catholic Charities Appeal had a chance to meet the people that have been part of our program this morning, I think we would triple the collection very easily um, because, uh, you know, it's obvious from their presence and their attitude towards Catholic Charities that we are significantly important in their lives, and that is wonderful. Um, I, you know, those of you who are watching as this is being streamed or who might see it on television have no idea how impressive it is to be in a room with kids who are in elementary school who pay attention. <laughs> and they sit there patiently and listen to us. It's just extraordinary, really. I don't know if I've seen anything like it anywhere. So thank you so much for being here and supporting us by your presence. It means a lot to us. I'm deeply grateful to David Ripson and the members of the Catholic Charities Appeal Board who have worked so hard uh, to develop our program and then distribute the funds that are collected. So please thank the members of the board for me. Um, Amy Stoner is someone I'm very proud of. Uh, she has given her heart as well as her time to the programs that we're about. And, and uh, anyone who meets her knows that uh, 
when you join the Catholic Charities community, you join a family where you have people who love you as mothers and sisters love their family. So, Amy, thank you for your good example. And uh, it's obvious from the way the kids behave themselves that there's no better uh, principal of any school <laughs> than Mrs. Uh, Kathleen Gould. So thank you so much for what you do. So thank you for being here, everyone. And again, a special uh, gratitude to the press and for the media for being present. If there's anything we can do in terms of further information for you, don't hesitate to let us know. And thank you, members of my staff, members of the Catholic Foundation, um, all of you who are present today. We're grateful for your presence as well. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.